psychiatrists, many of you in this room, predicted that only one person in a thousand would deliver the shocks across the board, an estimate that was off by a factor of 500. So what happened in the lab was discovered, not planned. But you expected, you knew you were going to worry some people. Mm -hmm. Stress, in fact, was a part of it. Well, every, every... Extreme stress. Every experiment is a situation where the end is unknown, indeterminate, something that might fail. The indeterminacy is part of the excitement. Ethics, the undertow of ethics. I wanted to ask, a, I wanted to ask a question, a series of questions about the psychological function of obedience, the conditions that shape it, the defense mechanisms it entails, the emotional forces that, that keep a person obeying. As someone with pretensions as a moral educator, let me suggest that science must enhance our moral personhood, not, not diminish it. You force people to torture other people? No. To see if no. they were... No, no. That is alien to my view. No one was forced, right? The experimenter told the subject to perform an action. What happened between the command and the outcome is the individual with a conscience and a will who can either obey or disobey. I don't see how you can seriously equate victimization in a laboratory con with the willful participation in mass murder. The victimization. Look, when the experiments were complete, all the subjects were sent this questionnaire. Here's some examples. 84% said they were glad to have been in the experiment. 15% indicated neutral feelings. 1.3% indicated negative feelings. 1.3%. Four-fifths thought more experiments of this sort should be carried out. And 74% said they had learned something of personal importance about themselves and about the conditions that shape human action.